Greetings, Taku Faithful. Thank you for joining me again this week. Once again, it's Larry Williams, OAW Commander in Chief, and I'm here to bring you all yet again another Game of Thrones character spotlight right here on Otaku Assemble! Weekly, and as always, we bring you the latest in this week's Game of Thrones character spotlight. And this week's character comes courtesy of Jake Buchanan who is the Facebook winner in the Spotlight Sweepstakes. And the character that was the most voted up this past week was none other than Sandor Glegane, a.k.a. The Hound. Now, I was actually surprised that The Hound was the most voted up character um, first because he won by a huge upset um, over Littlefinger, who had double the amount of votes that the Hound did earlier in the week and then at the very last minute managed to double um, in votes in order to get the uh, to get the decision so that was the first thing but the second thing is this is going to be the most difficult character spotlight video and that's because the Hound is a character I feel we really don't have enough to discuss him in as much detail as as, as I think we, we could now, and, 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 and that's for, that's for, I think, obvious reasons. Um, Taking consideration this, the Hound has been a supporting character for the, for the majority of the series as, as of this latest episode. And he didn't really be, you know, sort of come into the main character sort of fold until last season. Um, he was very much... A, uh, a supporting character in the first two seasons and I wouldn't even consider him a main supporting character because he didn't have that much screen time he was more or less just um, jo um, Joffrey's lackey you know his lap dog his sort of personal bodyguard and that was it and it wasn't until last season well no it wasn't until the end of season two after Blackwater when the Hound left and then he resurfaced at the beginning of last season that he got more screen time um, what with his scenes with the Brotherhood and then when he uh, pretty much apprehends Arya and whatnot um, and, and that's pretty much what brought him into sort of the main character stage is the fact that he's with Arya who had who is a main character that we've been following since the pilot and so you know immediately grouping him with her is going to give him some more screen time but prior to that though we didn't know much about the Hound um, outside of his little backstory and the few little scenes he had. And, that, and that's going to bring me to the comment that Jake mentioned in his request. He said that the Hound is probably the best gray character in the series. And I can't agree more. Um, and that's because, once again, the fact that we don't know a lot about him. We know enough to suggest that the Hound is not a hero nor a villain. Um, he's not a good guy, nor is he a bad guy. And he's not even an anti-hero, nor is he an anti-villain. He is sort of... Um, he, he's sort of a, that very much neutral sort of character. And the thing is, even in terms of personality type, He's not even a self-serving or a, a selfish character. There are multiple things he does throughout the series that benefit other people or help other people for the time being that have absolutely no benefit to, to him. Um, there has been a few times where he sort of helps out Sansa. Um, and then there's been a few times where he sort of helps out Arya. But at no point do they ever benefit him. Or at least I don't think they do. And especially in, in the case of what happened with Sansa, it didn't benefit him at all when you consider why he left King's Landing and then you consider his position now. Yeah, it didn't be him, benefit him whatsoever. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's really difficult to talk about him in much detail because the details aren't there. We don't know what his goals are. Mainly because he's just trying to figure out what his goals are. You know, we got that earlier in this season when he spoke about, you know, when Arya asked him, it's like, okay, well, after you turn me over to my aunt, what are you going to do? And he's, you know, sort of debating these things in his head, sort of weighing his options about what he can do next. So he doesn't even have a long-term term goal 
We don't know what his character motivations are. Um, and I don't really think he has any other than just doing his job. And that, and that goes uh, back into what I mentioned about how it would, it would have been very easy to write him off as being an antagonistic character because he was serving the Lannisters, but that was just his job. You know what I mean? And the second that he didn't want that job anymore, he just left. So yeah, it's really you can't really write him off as a bad guy either. Um, I don't know. It's just... I'm sorry, guys. It, uh, you know, I, I came up with this video segment to sort of complement my reviews. This would be the little tidbits, the, the chance that I could really dive into these characters a little bit more and sort of give a little bit more of my insight into these characters, what I think about them and whatnot. But I can't do that with the Hound. There's not enough there. Now, yeah, I could go ahead and speculate on, you know, what we could potentially see from his character. But there wasn't, there's not even enough leading into where we are right now in the story to really sort of speculate that. Now, I did go ahead and I gave him, you know, a nod in this week's episode review where, you know, his scene, his two scenes with Arya, you know, I thought how they sort of developed this bridge, this mutual understanding between the two characters, I thought played out really well and I thought it was necessary in order for them two to continue their story together. But outside of that, I, I just don't have anything. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know what else can be said. Now, I will say this, and I, and I think this will probably be my final comment on The Hound, is the fact that I fear one interesting thing they could have done with the Hound, we won't get to see. And what that would have been is this sort of resolution or this sort of catharsis that takes place between him and his brother. Um, how And however they decided to ha handle that, whether it just being a reunion, whether it just being a conversation, or whether it being a showdown, you know. I don't think we're going to get that. And that's because, number one, the brothers are split up. And number two, the fact that Gregor is going into this trial by combat, which there's the chance that he won't walk out of that. And seeing as how, you know, the Hounds wanted right now too, you know, there'd be absolutely no reason for him to return to King's Landing anytime soon. So the story has not really set up for that to happen. Unless, unless... Both characters manage to live through the obstacles they currently find themselves in. Like, if the Hound is able to, you know, forestall any more attempts on his life. And if Gregor is actually successful in the trial by combat, then that possibility of them reuniting, is, is, you know, that will be placed on the table again. But as it stands right now, there's no reason to believe that that would actually occur. Um, which I think is a tad bit disappointing because that would have been one, I think that's one of the easiest little story arcs they could have given the Hound because we because we got that backstory between him and his brother in season one. Like that was the first thing we found out about the Hound was what happened between him and his brother. Um, so yeah. It, but other than that, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's all the, the thoughts I really have on them. Um, yeah. So, that's going to wrap up this week's character spotlight, or lack thereof. Um, couldn't help it. And uh, But I do want to thank Jake for the suggestion. I want to thank all of those who voted it up. And Jake... You will have received a message from me by now, by the time you're viewing this video. So I want to go ahead and congratulate you on being the second of three finalists in the Spotlight Sweepstakes. You will automatically enter the raffle for a chance to single-handedly select the character for the Spotlight video of Week 10 and um, a guest spotlight on the Small Council live discussion in Week 9. And now... That means that with the conclusion of this video, the 
the Spotlight Sweepstakes now heads to Beamly.com. Guys, for those of you all who have yet to follow me on Beamly.com or to join the Game of Thrones TV room on Beamly.com, link, as always, is in the description box below. And for those of you all, this will be your final chance to enter the Spotlight Sweepstakes because now you will get two, you will get two different comment, comment threads to suggest characters for the next Spotlight Sweepstakes. That's going to be in the comments of this video's post in the Game of Thrones TV room as well as tomorrow night's Small Council Live discussion post on uh, the, in the Game of Thrones TV room on Beamly.com. Both comment threads will be um, open for suggestions. And as we've been doing for the past two weeks, suggest a character and vote for the one you want to see discussed in next week's video. The, whoever gets the most votes, that will be the character I will discuss. And the uh, viewer will be the third and final finalist to enter the Spotlight Sweepstakes. Kind of tired myself out repeating all the rules again. But you know how it is. So yes, if you have yet to... Once again, follow me on Beamly.com or to join the Game of Thrones TV room. Link is in the description box below. And remember, you must be a member of the Game of Thrones TV room in order to qualify for this week's um, Spotlight Sweepstakes. And with that being said, this has been Larry Williams, OAW Command-in-Chief, signing off. And until next time, peace.